never allow your energies to become destructive someone has asked to speak on different aspects of astrology and also on psychonomy psychonomy is the science wherein by looking at the gestures the voice modulations and things like these we assess the character we know about the person and the effect of music on growth development its various aspects music has been used in almost all the cultures from ancient times to now its form has changed i will speak on this topic in tomorrow's session today i will focus on never allow your energies to become destructive remember you cannot be purified until the ego vanishes water can clean the outer dirt however if your consciousness is full of such dross then it can only be washed by awareness i use the word awareness instead of any other method people are using their thus be continuing to do this zikr and they engage in destructive activities on the surface there is one thing and deep within there is something else love alone can sanctify your inner being and can transform you as well there is no great greater energy than love that can give you a real birth allow it to enchant your being enchanted with love the world love becomes reaches to another dimension you claim to have known love but your acquaintance is only of the world certainly love can be the key an acquaintance with this world is meaningless for you you have in fact learned this world from dictionary or you have heard love you have not experienced through life and living you are unaware of its tremendous energy field and the meaning of love in dictionary is quite different from its existential meaning in the scriptures of life out of your inner experience love is springs and when love is springs forth from deep within then its aliveness intensity and fire is something different the word fire has no heat to burn you the word water cannot quench your thirst so to if your understanding of love remains that of dictionary alone then no transformation can be possible in that case ego will not vanish and dross from your being cannot be removed love is the energy that transforms you if you are really enchanted by love then you cannot remain the same love is fire gold attains a new texture when it passes through the fire all impurities of gold burn in the fire and gold attains its utmost purity so too when you pass through the fire of love all impurities and dross from your being burn and then your being attains a new aura pure and sanctified try to understand the energy of love 
First, love and sin contradict to one another. Only then love can destroy and dissolve all impurities as sin from your being. Maybe you have never known that love and sin are two opposite states of being. You commit sin when love is no more or its energy has not yet enchanted you. All sins misdemeanor emanate in the absence of love. When you are enchanted by the energy of love, sin becomes impossible. Mahavir, that is why called love as non-violence. Buddha called love, gave it a ultimate flowering and called it as compassion. Jesus called love and he declared God is love. Jesus says you can forget God, love alone will do the rest. Someone has asked one Saint Augustine, what is the essence of religion? How can how you can save one from sin? Life is short and sin is infinite. The question is appropriate. If you go on dropping sins one by one, one life will come to an end, but sins will not exhaust. Give me the secret or the key that sin may dissolve. St. Augustine said, love is the key. Just be in love. Allow love to engulf you. Be in love and leave everything else. When you have known love, when you are enchanted by its energy field, you can sin no more. Love is the master key. Love is light. In life, lamp of love is not lit. That is why there is sin. Sin is negative. Sin is absence of love. Sin happens because there is no transforming positive energy. You can steal. It can happen because that which you are stealing you have no love for that. You may kill someone and the one you want to kill, you have no love for. You can cheat and deceive simply because there is no love in your life. All sin happens because of the absence of love. It is like a dark house. And darkness attracts all kind of creatures as soon as light comes in. The dark room slowly and slowly gets illumined and all negativities vanish. Try to understand, you get angry. All religions caution you from anger. And if your life energy does not move towards love, then what can you do? Love will be, anger will be spontaneous and natural. If you have really understood anger is that form of life energy which has not yet found its direction. The energy that could not become flower is now thorn. Love is creativity. Love creates you. If there is no creativity in you, in your life, then life becomes destructive. Such is the difference between your saints and criminals. In saint, life energy is creative and in criminal, the same energy has become destructive. This is the cause of all the activities that we see around us. 
A creator cannot be destructive. One who is not creative, howsoever, he may try to be a seed, may carry his tasbih along with him all the time, may be doing the zikr. If he is not creative, whatsoever he may do, what will happen of the energy? Unless energy transforms your understanding, the life will not change. And if the energy has begun to flow towards love, you have now opened new channels for this energy to flow. So too, if there is no love, then what will your life energy do? When your energy is not flowing in creative channels, then it will cause destruction. Love and virtue are all creative aspects. There is no need to struggle or fight with sin or all that is negative directly. All you need to do is change the direction of the energy. The rest will happen. People go on asking how to control anger. Controlling and managing anger is really a big modern day business. All along you remain contemplating on anger. First thing to manage anger is to stop thinking about it. The more you think about anger, you are giving energy to it. The more energy you give, it's like you are giving more air to the fire and trying to control it. You start thinking about something, your energy will become, begin to flow about that. Thinking is the way of the energy to flow. Thought is like a river or a stream. Whatever be the center of your attraction, your energy flows in that direction. It is like you take a canal or channel near a water source to carry water to the fields. So too, thoughts act as channel for life energy to flow in that direction. When your life energy moves in wrong direction, it becomes anger. And when your life energy moves in the right channel or direction, it becomes love. The day your life energy begins to flow towards God, you will be a different person. And how can it flow towards God? In creative ways. The moment you are flowing in divineness, all your past sins will vanish. And not only that, all future possibilities will also disappear. So allow your energy to channel into creative aspects. Whatever be the channel, it does not matter. You can be creative in myriad ways. In the absence of love, thus gathers unconsciousness. Only love can remove that dust. The first thing in the process of transformation is that never allow your energies to become destructive in any way. The destructive life energy is anger and sin. When you destroy something, it can be in two ways. First, you can destroy the house and then you can build a new structure. This is not destruction. This is the process of creation. And the second, when you destroy only for destruction, then it is not creation. It is the opposite. It is like you slap the child. This is not sin. If the slap is out of love, then it is creative. You cannot see him going astray. This is out of love. 
it is out of care and concern for the child's welfare you cannot let the child go astray you want him to change this is creative on the other hand you hit an enemy the slap is the same the energy is the same as when yet still there is a vast difference here you slap not out of creative energy this is an expression of destruction i have heard a sufi story once a sufi visited a village he was in search of holy place somewhere hidden in the mountain he came to a small tea shop to inquire the most honest and dishonest person in the village the owner gave the required information to the sufi the sufi first inquired from the honest man about the holy place the man gave the easiest and the shortest shortest direction to reach to the place this way passed through the mountains then he went to the dishonest one and he was surprised when this man said that the shortest and the easiest route passes through the mountain the two answers were similar sufi was surprised he went to the village if there was any sufi in the village remember truth and dishonesty are two shows and when someone attains to this divinity he becomes beyond the two the sufi was in a problem he expected the dishonest to say just the opposite both have given the same reply so he decided to seek the help of a master the master said although the two gave the same reply there is a vast difference in their understanding and view besides the mountain there is yet another way for this you have to cross over the river you cannot do without your own boat the honest one gave you the route through the mountain he knows the route of the river as well however he gave you the mountain route this he did simply because you did not have the boat and without boat you cannot use the river route he saw you route he saw you riding the dunk this will be useful on the mountain route however the donkey will be useless if you choose the river route assessing the entire situation he gave you the direction through the mountain route the other person is not concerned about you he gave you the mountain route not because of your situation instead because of his nature of creating trouble for the others the master said the two answers may seem similar there is a vast difference in their intentions actions may be similar actions determine nothing it is the inner being that actually determines psychologists say if the mother does not hit her son there can be no deeper relation between the two if you fear beating the son then the still intimacy lacks the son cannot forgive his father if the father yields to his demands easily the son has no experience therefore his demands matter nothing the father will have to introspect all demands of the son before he can make the decision also if the father gives total freedom to the son he cannot be forgiven 
by the sun. This is the reason the sons in the West have not been able to forgive their fathers. In the last 100 years, parents in the West have given too much freedom to the children. This has resulted in a wide gap between the two and this has become almost impossible to bridge now. Remember this, love gives. Love wants the life of the beloved be beautiful, auspicious, true and full of inner glory. Love transforms, love creates. Love can even transform destruction in creation. For love, creation is the goal and destruction is the way to attain this. When you are enchanted with love, love has evolved within. And when you are innovative and creative in life's relation, then sin can be no more. When you love, then sin becomes impossible. Like a vast canopy, love will go on spreading and then you will envision hidden deep within the entire creation. Then you will hesitate to cheat and steal. As love intensifies, you will find it difficult to do otherwise. Love knows life as an echo. Whatever you do, that alone showers on you. As love intensifies, everything becomes clear in life that no one is a stranger. If love, it is love alone that knows, there is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. It is love that unfolds the inner secrets that our lives are not aliens nor as a stranger's join. And as we move to each other by a causeless force beyond time and space, it is the glory of love. It is through the glory of love that soul can recognize its answering soul and feel a subtle presence across dividing time and space on life's roads. And when you are touched by the warning fingers, and when you are touched by the warming fingers of swift love, only then absorbed, wrap traveler can discover familiar splendors in an unknown face. It is love that thrills your being again to an immortal joy that bears. It is love that thrills your being again to an immortal joy that wears a mortal body for delight. Your body is a mortal wearing, covering and deep within there is bliss, there is delight. It is the insight of love that has experienced a power within, inner sanctum that knows beyond all human knowings. It is a heart that is enchanted with love, really recognizes that we are greater than our thoughts. And sometimes earth unveils a new vision here. Love is glory from eternity's sphere and to live, to love are signs of infinite things. Never create pain for your, for anyone, your wife or husband, because ultimately it is going to bounce back on you. When your husband or wife is saddened, Ultimately, you are pained. You want the other to be really happy? Rub. Remember, love responds love. Sorrow breeds in sorrow. And happiness 
mushrooms happiness i can never forget once a woman came to me she wanted to divorce her husband she asked something significant that speaks of human nature not of human love she asked is there any way that divorce can make my husband really miserable i know after the divorce he will be very happy and this i do not want she had really tortured her husband and made his life miserable and now she wants to make sure that even after the divorce he remains miserable in togetherness man creates unhappiness and even if this togetherness is not there you still want to continue to create unhappiness and when your so much focus is on making the life of the other miserable then it will certainly bounce back on you if blessing can bring happiness then blessing of one man can bring happiness to the entire world cosmic law never changes whatsoever you have done cannot be changed by my blessings to seek blessings is dishonesty you have hurt so many this is your crop and when the time comes to reap the crop you are seeking blessings you feel you are unhappy because there is no one to bless you no blessing can really reduce your misery or unhappiness if somebody's blessing can bring an understanding in you it is really good if somebody's blessing can sow the seed of love in you transformation will happen sin will vanish with love and misery and happiness and misery and unhappiness will vanish only when you start sowing the crop of happiness only when you start sowing the crop of happiness nanak says remembering that which is can sanctify your intellect that has been defiled by sin when you love someone then his pain and happiness becomes yours there is no boundary between the two now you start flowing towards one another so to when this begins to happen between you and god then all that happens between the two is prayer or worship or devotion this is culmination of fruition in love devotion or prayer is the ultimate flowering of love and when you can feel so happy by giving love to one also when you can feel unhappy by giving love also when you can feel unhappy by giving love to one then you can be connected with god in two ways one is the relation is of love this will lead you to heaven and the other is the way of the absence of love this will lead you to hell god implies your totality and when you love existence like the one be then all your sins can vanish that is why i gave you the medicine the meditation of total acceptance of the first even that happens that you encounter on a day to day basis or the person that you meet so you have to start your life somewhere you journey somewhere you start seeing the totality to that person irrespective of who he is 
and when you love existence like one being that person represents the totality of the existence then all your sins misdemeanors and all that is causing pain to you can really vanish love enchants your being love kindles the spark of totality of love in you for the entire existence in that state whatsoever wherever you look you will find oneness and that oneness is the quality is the attribute of that which we call god devotion or bhakti is a revolution it does not imply it implies there is no one other than god then your life becomes simple and fluid life the doer is no more and there is no one to sin the subject and object have vanished Devotion does not mean going to the place of your worship. It does not mean chanting your mantras, zikr like a parrot. Never think that such mechanical repetition will take you any further. You have been carrying the false key throughout your life and see. Look at all the people who are engaged in terrorist activity. they have the name of god constantly being chanted they have not found the right key all throughout they have been carrying the false key the real key means that you are now in love with the whole with the entire existence and the moment you are in love with the entire existence all that is negative vanishes the real key means this entire existence is my beloved each particle and each eye now reflects the glory of love when you live your life with such an understanding this is devotion it will transform your life and living and as this understanding deepens in you you are now soaked in his texture you may be alone but entire existence will support you there is a commune a synergistic harmony a rhythm between you and the existence only such love can enchant can sanctify your being in the absence of this whatsoever you do worship chanting yajna building holy places chanting mantras or your zikr will be futile this will simply imply that you have not yet found the secret love is the secret let love enchant you your inner being will sanctify and this is the ritualistic bath only such a but can wash the dross from your mind from your innerness from your being this is the real holy bath by saying and claiming one does not become holy or unholy all your thinking and aspirations of being holy cannot help moving finger rights and having it moves on and then everything moves accordingly neither word nor thinking can help you significantly you think too much in favor of virtue and very little about sin when anger grips you pause for a moment postpone anger for a few moments when anger grips you all awareness is lost you want to be angry that very moment when it grips you and if i ask you to meditate you have no time 
you go on postponing first and then you say what is the hurry life is vast meditation is something for the later part of the life you never hear the footsteps of death approaching even a dying man cannot hear the footsteps of death you go on postponing you never come to know the end and even when it comes only others know it is not others know but not you really indeed you never die because conceptually you remain alive even while dying you go on planning life you go on postponing auspicious you postpone and all that is an auspicious you go on you do instantaneously when would you begin to postpone all that is an auspicious and will be ready for the auspicious one never trust yourself the auspicious is difficult sometimes in certain moments you are on those peaks when desire for the auspicious is intense do not think in that moments auspicious means that about which nothing can be said or thought auspicious has to be allowed to happen it means whenever you want to share or relinquish or be into the a spiritual way never think for a moment never delay such moments never come back again and again and whenever any ill thought comes to your mind postpone it for 24 hours before you initiate the process what is the hurry death is not coming and even if it comes then what harm can it cause remember if you can succeed in postponing the thought of ill doing for 24 hours then you will never be able to do this the unconsciousness of doing ill is an instantaneous happening any action can only be possible in certain moments when there is unconsciousness when your consciousness is intense you are creative and overflowing with love and when your consciousness is full of unconscious moments you are destructive you want to destroy all that is auspicious i have heard george ivanovich gurdjieff belonged to a nomadic society when his father was dying George was a little boy of 7 or 8 years of age. His father said, "Son, I have not gained anything in my life, but my experience of life can be encompassed in one sentence. When anger is trying to grip into you, try to postpone it for a few moments." do not act in such moments gurjeev says he did not understand this message but out of his respect for his father he started practicing it from that very moment sometimes people say unpleasant things to him he will simply reply that right now i am not in a position to respond to you i will come back after 24 hours and will respond sometimes there was no need to go when he introspected all this he realized whatsoever the person is saying is not true and that which is not true what is the point of getting angry about that you know yourself better and sometimes it happened that somebody has criticized him for something 
he will introspect and say whatsoever the person was saying was true. This is how I am. And when I am like this, then what is the point of getting angry if someone says you are an ugly person? That's how I am. So there was no need for him to go. And he said that the simple device has transformed, transformed his life. You create all situations yourself. Generally, mind says all problems, failures, etc. arise because of the other. And all that is auspicious happens because of me. This is wrong. All that is happening in your life is the outcome of the sequence of your doings and thinking. You are responsible for all that is happening in your life. The day, the moment you accept total responsibility for all that is happening in your life, the process of transformation will begin. And when you blame others for miserable life, then transformation cannot happen. Such an understanding that you are totally responsible for all that is happening in your life is the beginning of religious life. Certainly there is a time gap between sowing the seeds and reaping the crop. And when crop is ready for reaping, then you forget that it is you who had planted the seeds. The first thing for transformation is total acceptance and responsibility for all that is happening. Only then something can be possible. The process is twofold. First, willingly and lovingly accept everything as the outcome of your doing. And the second implies that in doing so, never create new situations. Only then you can exhaust the old accounts and will not open any new accounts. Try to understand this. Once Buddha was sermoning in a place, a man arose from amidst the crowd, came near Buddha and then spit on him. Buddha said nothing, instead he wiped his spit with his sheet. This angered Buddha's disciple Anand. Anand said, this is a limit. You are an innocent person who has never harmed anyone and now this person has a spit on you. But Buddha said in response to it, it is meaningful. Buddha said, why are you getting angry and excited? This man did not spit on you. Such thinking and action will create a new sequence of action in your life. And you do not know this person. I came to this village only because of this man. I had an open, unfinished account with him. When I say close the open account, I do not mean your bank accounts. Yes, indeed it is like an open bank account of which you have forgotten that you have opened the account in this bank that this person represents. I came to this village only because of this man. I had an open and finished account with him. If this man did not spit on me, I would have been in trouble. With this, the account that was open for long is now closed. That is why I am thankful to him. You need not be angry or excited. You do not come in between. All those whom I have pained in the past, in my unconscious moments, have to repay. And I need to exhaust and close all such accounts before I can enter Mahaparinirvana. Before this is possible, all relation with people, objects, out of anger, hate, attachment and greed, have to exhaust. Such is the understanding of a master. 
and you have to decide whether you want to live with your life according to Buddhas or otherwise. Accept all that is happening as the outcome of your past doings. Live life meditatively so that no new account is open. Only then you can be free from this never-ending cycle of birth and death. And when everything happens according to the existential law, your pilgrimages, your austerities and all other ritualistic acts will become meaningless. One who listens and meditates